coming in hot with AI hacks today. Kieran and I have spent over 60 hours just playing with AI and how it's going to impact your marketing. We're coming to you with the best six examples in under an hour that you can use today to grow your business. You're going to want to stick around to the very end because everything is something you can do right now. I'm your co-host, Kip Bodner, Chief Marketing Officer at HubSpot. I'm joined by Kieran Flanagan, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Zapier. And this is Marketing Against the Grain. Let's get into today's show. Okay, Kieran, our WhatsApps have been on fire. I got a WhatsApp from you being like, the show today is going to be long because I got a lot of great examples. <laughs> you basically went ham on the assignment, which was go play with all the AI tools and come back with some amazing marketing hacks. And you know what? That's not even the biggest thing that's going to happen today. Because Kieran, you and I, we're giddy with excitement around all the examples we have. And you know Kieran's excited when he, we come into the pre-show and he's like, I got to start the episode. I, 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 I got to. Like, <laughs> got you so can't kick things. off today's show. Like, I got to start it. And so Kieran... I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you start it. You asked nicely and kindly. So, I'm a good marketer. I come up with good strap lines. I can do equal parts creativity, equal parts science. That's not being boastful, but it's like years of practice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set up with like a cool tagline that I came up with, and then I decided to use AI to be my brand creative partner. Right? Okay. Oh, I like this. So this is AI as your creative partner. AI as a creative partner. Is AI going to be any good as a creative partner? And so the strap line is, it's a play on words. So Zapier recently, recently launched a product called Tables. Tables plus our workflow tool allows you to automate much more scalable and scalable ways within your company, right? And it actually allows you to replace Google Sheets. It's much more reliable than having Google Sheets. So I have this strap line, which is Zapier automates the sheets, the sheet out of work, right? Gap, Zapier oh, automates. I, love, I, always, I always love it when somebody plays with a naughty word and there and, you go for, for, for a brand campaign. So I'm like, yo, it is I mean, if that strap line is not a testament to your marketing genius, come on. I, don't, I don't know what it is. Automates the sheet out of work, the sheet out of, come on. And so I split tested these things as well, right? Because I'm also part growth. And so I didn't want to just use one AI partner. I used the ChatGPT Bing for, for these two things because Bard can't do images yet for me anyway. And so I'm like, hey, you're an incredible brand creative partner. Can you help me take this and create a billboard? Because I want to do above the line and below the line. Create a billboard, show me how it looks on a bus, and actually show me how it looks as a digital ad. And by the way, did you know there's a study that was released? First of all, you know I like breath work. There was a study that oh, was I, released. I've seen breath work here too. If you tell the AI to breathe, take its time, it will actually yeah. perform tasks better. Did you see that study? I love it. The AI also enjoys meditation. Oh, we all we all need to breathe. Even machines need to breathe, it turns out. So you can see every time I do it, for people on the RSS, this is definitely a better episode on YouTube. We'll make it good for YouTube, but if you want to oh, go yeah. check go out to YouTube. Go to YouTube, and if, you're, if you love the video, please hit subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment of your favorite example. But I love I love that you actually, in your prompt, tell, tell you. Breathe. Tell the AI, breathe. You've, You've got, got this. this. <laughs> We're going to do great. Yeah. I'm a good AI partner. All right, so where do we start? All right, so I'm going to go through the images. I'm going to go show you this and show you Bing because they're okay. equally part terrible. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so here's here's my billboard. First of all, I like Zappar automats the sheet out of work and then this random tables <laughs> QR code. <laughs> yeah, the tables QR code isn't great. Not all lie, right. It's not, not great. The and nobody bus... loves half a billboard of, a, of an open laptop either. The bus is, I feel like this is, I don't know, like, I, I, look, I think you could, prob I, you could probably run the bus creative. Bus it's not bad awful, creative. And then this is quite for the digital ad. You're like, what the hell? This is a oh, lot, a lot oh, of stuff. Oh, learn more. That is like Two the least leg <laughs> legible digital ad ever. <laughs> Two learn more. Okay, it gets better. So I'm like, come on, AI. We can do better than this. I give it some additional guidance. But just uh, like you would any designer or person, right, the you first iterate. rev is not going to be good. We know now, that, right? Hopefully the second rev is better or you would fire that person. Well, guess what? The second rev is worth well, <laughs> where we're... the AI second rev wasn't as good. So I tell it to take some inspiration from Coke and Pepsi, right? Here, take mm -hmm. some inspiration. These are really great creative ad. They're used very good creative ad agencies. Let's do this again. I tell it, you don't need to mention tables. Tables is, you know, in, in the strap line covers that for us. I think it thinks that Zapier is a washing up liquid. <laughs> In the second iteration. <laughs> so I this, actually, actually kind of like this. This one. I'm not going to lie to you. I love sheet the colors in this. The colors are pretty cool, but it gets weirder. Okay, this is the bus. Zapper automates the sheet out of work. I think it's getting the sheet part as like a 
bed sheet, oh, maybe. Yeah, so it's, it's got like the night time. Yeah. So did you prompt it to say that the sheet was in reference to Google Sheets, not a physical I, sheet? That is actually pretty good. I should have done that. Because the third one see, is like on see, the tablet. You're blaming AI and you just gave it a bad, <laughs> bad brief, prompts. bro. You well, just what? gave it a bad brief. Zapier as a washing up liquid. All right. So anyway, I'm going to I'm gonna do, one, I'm gonna do one more. I can do one more because that's AI actually does not get your puns, man. You got to explain the puns. So it gets better. It gets better. I'm going to show you how I got better. Okay, okay. But I want to show you one last one of the of the funny ones because I actually did it on Bing. I have to just show you. So the Bing ones are not bad, right? Look. Yeah. It, it, it actually grabs this from Zapier's website, the screenshot, okay. and puts it onto the bill billboard. I don't know what is going on with the text. Yeah, the text and everything. Here, like... Is. It's you know got the tables on the laptop, automates the sheet out of work. Yeah. This one is actually not too bad, right? Look at this. No. It's got the. No, it's not bad. It's, yeah, it's got the sheet. It's got the little thing to automate. Now the bus ones of these are hilarious. <laughs> okay, I got to see them. I got to see them. <laughs> Zapier, it's like Zapier automates the, sh the sheet out of work with this dude. I don't know what he is actually doing. He looks like he's doing something around a calendar. They get better. This one is kind of cool, but it's got Zapier toilets in the end. What? Look, see in the bus headline, zap your toilets. It's actually a pretty cool graphic. Well, it's maybe so. So you're saying Bing got your shit joke better than yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Actually, it's better than ChatGPT. Bing's got the shit joke. Is what that, you're that's saying. That's actually really good. Actually, it's got the shit joke, and then this one is he, he got it, and ChatGPT didn't. Okay, Bing, Bing was a little better at the subtlety. Well, of your, so then of your joke. I give it a, but so I give it more specifics, right? I say create a strap line, yeah. create a billboard, create a strap line. Show show that sheets is floating up in the sky. A happy person is press and automate on their laptop. And so this actually is pretty good, right? This is like a, a, a billboard. Well, it turns out when you actually brief the AI yeah, like a I real know, marketer, it actually so, does something pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I know. Come so on. exactly. So briefs do matter. So this here is actually not 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 usable, but not too far, like not too degree. It's not bad. Not not bad. So the more specific you can be, it's actually phenomenal how good of a job it can be. As but, a but creative by the way, partner, if you, if you were a marketer before, this would you either would have had to have give a design team what a week or two, or you oh, have to have uh, hire forever. a creative agency to come and create a bunch of concepts and do a dog and pony show, and you did all of this in like an hour. I did this in half an hour, and I could yeah. refine this way more, right? I could actually, I've got this version here. Within I can a couple hours, hour you could have usable creative. You could have usable creative, which 100%. is which is. Going from weeks to hours, that is one of the game changers of AI is the just the rapid ability to execute. And going from weeks to hours is pretty freaking incredible. I don't know what's going on in the text in Dali. I need to look that up because it cannot spell properly, even though I yeah, get it that's the spelling. A, well, you know why? Because that's one of the core bugs around Isn't... copyright and stuff of Dali, of uh, the original Dali. I think they yeah, fixed yeah, yeah. it in Dali 3, which is why the Bing... Bing isn't using Dali 3 yet, which is part of the challenge. But that's just a... A weird side note. Okay, that was good. So what we're saying is, AI is a good creative partner if you brief, brief it, keep you iterating, need to brief just it like you would with specific. humans. By the yeah. way, you have lots of design rounds and briefs and iteration. AI needs the same thing. Okay, uh, where do I, where do I want to start, Karen? I got I got I got some good ones. I'll st I'll start here. I have AI as your marketing consultant slash like marketing strategist. Okay. So, did you watch season three of Lupin? I've never watched Lupin, and I know that I should. Oh, I know that got, I should. You, for, I know first I should. of all, like, put cancel your plans for this weekend and go watch Lupin on Netflix. It's a, it's an amazing French heist show. I'm watching it's the two-pack documentary. So, did you watch the Defiant ones? The documentary, no. the Defiant ones, the music documentary? It's the best music documentary ever made. They made a- they Oh, made yeah, a, the, do the Dr. Dre, Jimmy yeah. Ivy one. Yes, yeah, 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 I did. It's they, incredible. Yeah, they made a new one around Tupac, and it is incredible. All right, okay, so I got to watch that. So I'll watch so Lupin, Lupin you watch that. is the show about a thief. He pulls off the greatest heists in the world. And Netflix ran an ad campaign, Kieran. And this is one of the ads. Oh, from that's that campaign. cool. That's super cool. And you're like, oh, that is a freaking good ad. And if you're, if you're, if you're listening to the podcast on audio, you should go to YouTube. But I'm going to explain. It's a picture of a man's wrist and arm with an imprint of a watch that's missing that's been stolen. And it's to show that uh, it's to promote the season premiere of Lupin, which pr premiered a couple weeks ago. So, Kieran, what did I do? I asked Chat GPT. I was like, "What makes this ad for Netflix show Lupin like so good? Like, why is why does this work?" 
And you know what it did? It broke down for me why the ad was so good. So I could recreate a similar type of ad for my business or AKA I could get the briefing right for what you just did, right? This would be like the pre-step to what right. you just showed, right? You would take some of your favorite ads. Ooh, you would use I would try that tonight. chat GPT to tell you what about them was good. And then basically take all of what it feeds you back into prompt for the yes. ad campaign that you are trying to build, right? I love that. This is the workflow that's pretty amazing. So go and just gather three to five great ads and then ask ChatGPT to break down for you. And so here it's simplicity, mystery. Like I, I love that they, it, it caught the subtlety of the mystery and like the emotion that it was trying to draw. Brand association even picks up that the golden crown is like for luxury. It didn't, it didn't call out that it's like supposed to be like a Rolex like illusion, but like, man, it got all of the subtlety. It got the clear call to action. It, what I love about ChatGPT too, it gets the, it forces you to get the basics right, right? It's like, oh, it told you when the show was coming out. That's really important. You know, it told you right. where to watch the show. Like those are marketing basics that it's easy for you to get excited about an idea and forget the basics. And this really helped get the basics right. And so what I love in this example is this is one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do. If you're using AI to build a brand campaign, to build ads, to build creative of any kind, start with this step. Take some of the best work, find the common elements, and then make sure that those common elements are included in the new work and the new campaign that you create. All right. I love that. So this is Chat GPT as like your your David Ogilvy. He, he's like your advertising consultant on via AI to show you what your ad campaign, what your creative, what your messaging should really be. Right. You can stitch both our flows together, probably yes. using like auto GPT where you can actually ask it to take a bunch of ads, provide a bunch of best practice recommendations and then call another agent and create the image and pass the best practice recommendations and then actually have the output. This is where we're going, right? Like go find exactly. this. I actually did try this on my brand uh, example that I showed you through through Bing and Dally, which is I said, hey, you're a brand creative for, and you've done campaigns for Nike, Apple, Airbnb. That's your style, simplistic, elegant, concise. Love Take that. that style and then apply it to this concept. Now it couldn't do that. I think maybe because of because I mentioned brand names and it thought it got confused that it was some copywriting. But I think in the future we're gonna be able to do exactly what you just did, which is hey, take these ads and then take this idea, apply best practices, and give me output. And that is going to be an incredible game changer. It's gonna improve game changer. the quality of execution of marketing across the board in the world significantly. And you can get ahead just by doing the, like, this is all free. We're all doing this with free or $20 a month tools. This is not expensive. And you can do this right now. And if you adopt these tools and just uh, change your workflow with them right now, it will change the game and level up your output. Okay, Kieran, what's, what, what do you got so next? I'll, st I'll stick to the brand slash position, messaging slash positioning oh, okay. angle for, for ChatGPT. So the thing I started to use it for yesterday is storytelling frameworks, right? Oh, like, I love take, that. Take well-known storytelling framework, frameworks and tell the story of your brand through those frameworks. So the one I really wanted to try was Pixar because I think Pixar is a great way to like create a first version of your product narrative. I don't think you'll use it anywhere externally, but internally, it is a great way to think about your product narrative. Again, look, breathe, take 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to steal your breathing prompt. So I told it, I told it, first of all, to describe the Pixar storytelling framework. This is a pretty pretty famous framework where you actually tell the story of your brand and product through this framework. And it goes once upon a time, every day until one day, because of that, because of that, until finally, right? That is the story mm -hmm. that the way you tell that story. And so I got it to tell the story of Zapier through that. So once upon a time, I won't read all of this out, but some of the cool things it did say is like, it got the until one day, right? Until they basically, Every day they spend hours moving data between apps, setting up manual reminders and trying to ensure that no tasks fell through the cracks, blah, blah, and went on and on and on. And then until one day they discovered Zapier's art workflow automation tool, it promised a world where apps talked to each other seamlessly and manual tasks were a thing of the past. Like 
it really started to nail this. And then because of that, right, they started connecting their favorite tools, talked about the fact that marketers got better, salespeople got better, ops folks oh, nice. had better data consistency. Then it said because of that, days became more productive. They reclaimed hours in their week, oh, ooh, which they now good. spend on strategic plan and relationship building and innovating. So it took mundane you and elevated. Have, you it's, couldn't have even written it this I good. couldn't have written it this good, right? The quality no, of their no work chance. improved. They felt more in control of their tools rather than being controlled by them. And then until finally... Work, Zapier's workflow automation tool became a trusty sidekick. Really nailed it. And I actually iterated a bunch of times and it got better each and every time. Nailed it. Okay, but I could not leave it there, right? I of just course you it couldn't. There. I had to turn this into a Pixar, Pixar storyboard, right? <laughs> Love because it. like, what, what better thing could you do than start to try to create a storyboard around this for the team? So I wanted to send it to the product marketing team. I actually sent it to the exec team as well to show them, hey, this is what a Pixar story looks like for Zapier. So... It does, it does a pretty good job. Like it has, this is the first, you know, once upon a this time, is pretty good. right? This is yeah. uh, the marketers and salespeople. It's a, just a chaotic office. If you're on the RSS feed, again, first thing is like once upon a time, setting up that scene, the way it sets up the scene is it shows this chaotic off, office, but it's in like very Pixar style. Then it has the, what is it? Every day. So like, this is the every day. They're surrounded by chaos, right? Surrounded by the swirling papers, surrounded by all of these chores, all of these tasks. Until one day, this is the uh, Zapier uh, da, 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 da. lights, right? They all find the light, the Zapier light. The thing that I realize is, yeah, because of copyright, I can't use our logo. I yeah. think I think there, I don't know in the enterprise version, I must check. Can you actually feed it your logo and images yeah, and things like that? I believe you can, yes. Yeah. And then this is really cool. I thought this was so cool. So like Pixar, did you ever see the Pixar cartoon in your head where like it shows you your oh, control? Yeah. So this is like you as a human being freed and all of these are little versions of you doing all of the work oh, for you, right? So it's like you are- pretty, That's pretty cool. Right, watch as miniature superhero versions of themselves tackle tasks efficiently. And then the that's last- That's real good. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's real good. The last two is, where did I go here? The last two is I'm like, glad I'm a marketer now look, and not 20 years from now. Look at these. This is like, this is what happens after all of that. Look at the office. It's bright. There's innovation. There's a lot of sticky notes. It doesn't create innovation with sticky notes. And then this is so cool, right? What actually happens? What should you do in B2B marketing? Brand positioning. Your entire job is to get someone promoted. That is it. Yeah. Your entire job is to sell the benefits. The benefit is to the individual. The individual's career is their benefit. It shows you this end state where all of these people, I think they're drinking either a whiskey or let's say orange juice, but in the background, there's all these accolades because they've had time to accelerate their career because Zapier has taken the workload off them. I mean, come on. Come on that is, good. That Bra is so Bra good, Bra right? Bra so I think as a product positioning expert and you give it what I did that worked really well is I set up the framework. So I asked it to yes. describe the framework. I told it part of the frameworks that were applicable and not applicable. When I talked about the story, the Pixar storytelling framework, I was like, okay, keep these parts. These parts are not as applicable to a technology brand. And then just let it tell the story and then convert that into a storyboard. And the storyboard is kind of for fun, but I did send it to the product marketing team because I thought, hey, like this is a fun no, like, it's, it, it's, version. It's, it's not bad, dude, Right. in terms of like a starting point. It's good. And you did the right thing of prompting it with like the Pixar framework and giving it the anchor in that was the magic of this, right? Right. Like because you were able to tell it how you wanted this story to appear, it was able to do a much better job of telling a clear story, which I think the story is exceptionally clear and like gets the value prop of Zapier it across. It truly got the value. Directly. That's the part I was amazed yes. by. It. Like it really nailed the mundane tasks, automation, you can work on innovation because you can work in innovation. Your ho your office is happier, which we all agree with. You're doing much better work and you have much you have people with better accolades. The other one that I would use this for, and I'm going to do it over the weekend, is I would create a sales pitch deck based upon Andy Raskin's framework or April Dunford's framework and actually give it that information and ask it to create a five to 10 page or slide pitch deck. So I'm gonna do that over the weekend because I think that one will work really well as well. T totally agree. Okay, that was that was a really good example. AI, especially chat, especially chat GPT, which is what you use as your positioning and storytelling consultant. Love that one. Okay, Kieran, I'm going to show you an example of using AI to fix what I think is the biggest problem among marketers. What do you think gives marketers more anxiety than anything else? 
Oh, I'm not going to get this right because I have the actual lack of, human. Lack of data. This is the actual data. human, which is hard for you because I know human humans are, <laughs> I don't are, actually are find 50, any. 50. I have to say, someone asked me human. this before. I, we were having like a real conversation and they were like, oh, I get so so much like anxiety about this part and that part of my double. Like I've literally never, I, I, I feel bad. I've yeah, never so what, had. What did they tell you? What, 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 where do they have that anxiety? Lack of data, fear of being wrong, fear, fear of looking of stupid. Fear of being wrong. That's the big That's thing like, here. Same thing as lack of data, right? We, we well, use well, data as a crutch. Well, right, because marketing, hey, dirty. first of all, dirty secret, everybody. Marketing is subjective. It is not objective, right? Agreed. Marketing is what we think. There is no actual perfectly right answer. And because of that, a lot of people, especially if they're earlier in their career, maybe short on confidence that day, they're going to have anxiety and fear, right? And so, Kieran, why not instead have AI be your critic. So I did something. I took a screenshot of the HubSpot homepage. I uploaded that to ChatGPT and I said, give me feedback about my website. How can I change the design or rewrite the text to get more sales leaders to sign up for our free CRM product, right? So you can imagine like you're working on the HubSpot website or any website and you're like, crap, I gotta have a meeting with the CMO. I gotta do all this stuff. Like I gotta make sure I get everything right. Well, you could, your very first line of feedback can be from AI that is essentially emotionless, right? It's like it has no bearing on your life. And you know what? The feedback was good. And what blew me away here, Kieran, is number two on the list. Color palette. The orange color seems dominant and attention grabbing. Oh, wow. Suitable for CTAs, yeah, however, ensure it's not overpowering and it's consistent with your branding. How many times did we have, a, have we had a debate about orange sometimes being too overpowering <laughs> a lot like literally like it's been like a year of my life debating the color orange i remember when i uh, first redesigned the hubspot website and i think you were like hey go and do fix the website or and i was like okay well i'm going to do whatever i want you're like cool do whatever you want and i was like okay here's my big idea and this is back in the this is back in the early days where like hubspot was it. way more like a media company than anything else you wouldn't really know what we did i was like hey can you just like tell people what we do <laughs> that's what do you like just like literally tell people we sell software that's it that's, that's the only thing Does, there was a lot of design talk about well how much orange do we need to have to tell people what we sell well right exactly like these are real things that like all of these elements that it's c calling out for design feedback and what, what's interesting right is i asked for both design and copy feedback and so it broke it out into two different sections and so it gives us really good design feedback the color palette thing i think was the most interesting and then on the content feedback, it goes pretty deep, right? And so it's like, it's, it's, it's attacking the headline just I straight from the I, back. Yeah, I love Grow better with HubSpot. Off. It's catchy, but might be more effective to directly address the pain points of sales leaders. For instance, streamline your sales process with HubSpot. It's not wrong. It's right? cool. It's cool. I actually have an example coming up where I try to do something similar where you, you've managed to, like it's taken elements of the, it's not just giving you generic advice. This is the real. No. This is the real game changer recently that people don't realize is that maybe three months ago, you would have asked it that question and it would have given you five generic tips. Generic shitty answers, Now it's yeah. given you tips based upon the actual thing it can index and analyze. And that is huge. It's got like, look, it's got some good things. It's like on the offer, specifically state it's the, the free tools advantages and why you want to do that over the premium product, right? Like... This is good feedback. It's good copywriting. If if I'm the person working on this homepage, like this is helpful. Super helpful. Right? I would listen and do a bunch of this stuff. And by the way, it's going to remove all of the fear because you're going to do this, you're going to iterate, and then you're going to come to like a human review process with a clear point of view. Make You will have made significant changes because part of the biggest challenge in marketing is you're like, oh, I'm afraid to be wrong, so I'm just going to like iterate just a tiny bit on what we're currently doing versus like, oh no, I'm gonna come with a very different approach to what we're doing. Okay, do you want me to give you the business idea? And I will actually pause it by saying, either I actually may do this idea because it's such a good idea. You might do this idea and we may just go do this together. Okay, or sign me up. A, a listener should do this idea and please do reach out to me. I honestly will invest. I've invested in one other listener's okay, idea. Okay, so either so we're today. doing this or we're investing in right. somebody else to do this. We talked about this before, so it's not a new idea. I've talked about doing this before, but why, what would make that idea, what would make what you just did 10X? What would make it 10X is if you had an assistant trained to act like the persona that you sell to, yes. and then you asked it the exact tips on how does this resonate with that person. 
And so you had a VP of sales bot, and then I could put the page into the VP of sales bot. And I would say, what parts of this page resonate to you because our software helps VP of sales in this way? And what parts of the page does not resonate with you? So it's character.ai for B2B, and those B2B assistants can help you actually make your marketing completely on point for the persona that you are trying to attract, engage, and acquire. That is an incredible idea. Someone should 100% do that. And if you are doing that, reach out to us. As you said that, I, I just tweeted who is building the B2B version of character.ai. There you go. I want to know. There's a check. It, that's waiting. how good of the idea it is. There's it is a check such waiting. a freaking great idea. I've, I've that got is like a hundred million dollar idea you just gave away for free. I give it away for free, but I, I, the law of reciprocity, go on, you say it, the law of reciprocity. I expect someone to come with me and ask me for a check so I can get in on the action. Yeah, you, uh, you want to share, you want to share the reapings of the idea. I, I, I want to share the reapings. I love it. Let's do it. I actually did take, I thought it would be kind of cool to show your example, my example in copywriting because I tried it on very similar in Bard. Yours is way better. I actually was trying to get Bard to do something very similar where I, I'm like, hey, take this page from Zapier and like specifically tell me the parts you want to change to make the copy better based upon yep. like an actual copywriting tip. What I thought was really funny was basically, yeah, I just give me a like pseudo fuck you, right? So <laughs> it... <laughs> It, it, it does this. I love it with AI. Just, yeah. just, so I'll show just you how it does you. it. I'll show you how it does So the first time it comes through, I'm like, it gives actually really good advice. Talks about, you know, the... It, it talk, now, Bard, one thing I have realized, because everything that I've shown you, I'm showing you on one chat engine, but I did them in all three. And so mm -hmm. I split tested them because I'm a geek. I will say open ChatGPT is far more accurate. Hallucinates far yes. less than Bard. So Bard tells that. me like the Zapier homepage says automate your workflow, save time and grow business is too generic. We don't say this Bard, okay? <laughs> Just so you know, we're not that generic. And then it does actually give some good headlines. Like I like I like to get more done without working hard or some other things. Anyway, so I don't want, we, we've done copywriting, so I won't spend too long on this, but I wanna show you, I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. It's got some interesting things in here. Again, somewhat applicable to the page, like it's grabbed information from the page. A lot of the times it's hallucinated. We ha we actually don't have the things that told me on the page. But then I'm like, okay, well, can you just, can you do this again? But this time, can you actually provide recommendation based upon some of the best known copywriters? And so Ooh, I'm like, like give, give me a new set of recommendations and tell me why you've recommended that based upon an a cop based upon a, like a well-known copywriter like why a well-known copywriter would tell me to change this and what it did what it did was just give me the exact same tips and then just bolt on a, a copywriter say, a copywriter said you should do this and made up the reason the copywriter told me I should do this so like on the on the headline it go it gave me the same tip around the headline and then it said because David Ogilvy once said the headline oh, is the most on. important get, sentence you'll ever write. Get out of, get, get David Ogilvy who on. died who died in 1999 because he said this is because the headline is the first thing that people will see when they visit a website. I don't think he def, I don't think he said that. And they give me a bunch of other one quotes from copywriters. I looked them up. Uh, None of these right, copywriters right, said them. Kieran, Kieran, stop sharing because I I have the ultimate third part. My my, my other example is related to this copywriting. And we I, I believe we were both using the wrong AI Punk. engine. So I am doing a deep cut for our B2B friends today. And you know what I did, Kieran? I took, I, I got Claude, I, I'm using Claude, which is a Anthropic's AI assistant. And with Claude, it has a really long, you can, you can upload PDFs, you can give it a lot of text and it can handle a much higher length of That's training awesome. and input, right? So we you know what I did, Kieran? I got a Gartner sales report. <laughs> Don't worry, Gartner, it's like a year old. I'm not doing anything <laughs> sketchy with your sales reports, but a, a, a report on sales software and what sales leader, leaders should be doing and evaluating in their sales software. And then I uploaded a PDF version of the HubSpot sales hub product page. Mm, you're doing the B2B characters AI manually. I'm doing it manually. And I said, hey, I, I prompted it. I said, hey, I've attached these PDFs. One, one's from Gartner, one's of sales. Can you write me a thousand word white paper for a head of sales as why a five of a uh, head of sales for a 500 person company as why HubSpot is the best sales software for high growth 500 employee businesses? Did the right? AI say, 
I want to be a creative, fuck your white paper. Papers. No, all the humans probably would have said that, but AI, listen to me. It's great. But, and then, but then I realized that prompt wasn't very good. And so I was like, oh, I need you to rewrite it because you need to reference the key points from the Gartner document and why HubSpot actually solves them. And so then it revises this entire white paper about why HubSpot is ideal for is the ideal sales, sales software for high growth, mid-sized companies. And it, it even starts with, as a head of sales, reviewing the latest sales technology landscape from Gartner. It's clear you need software that's solving for improving sales productivity and providing a quality seller experience. I mean, this is pretty awesome, right? Like if you're a field marketer at some boring B2B company, this is a game changer for you. This would have taken you... Wait, sorry, did you just say if you're a field marketer at a really boring B2B company? Of course. <laughs> See, I just imagine some of the listeners truly inspired by those words. <laughs> oh, that's me. You I'm know, a B2B you're, marker you're, and I'm really boring. If you're company. like in some telecom <laughs> company and you're like, you're, look, I am the marketer for the UK for this boring <laughs> telecom company, but we're number one on the telecom <laughs> quadrant, baby. <laughs> and they're having to write all these boring white papers. They are. Having At to, least yes. they're going to be good. And it's going to take them like an hour instead of like days or weeks. Come on. You got to admit, this is a, this is a good use case. This is like what I'm getting at, which is like, okay, take the page. First of all, let's go through this three stages. I think we went through first stage was we would just say to AI, provide me some copyright and tips for this brand. And it would just spit out the generic tips, right? Yeah. Now what we're showing and what you've shown multiple times, and I've shown some examples of, it can actually take the page and pull it apart. It could tell you about the color palette of the HubSpot page. That is exactly. ridiculous and provide recommendations to that level. The third to me is we can pass in data to say you are, when we say like you're this and you're that, but we'll actually be able to train it on a subset of data to say, no, you're actually a CMO at a, at a in companies of like 500 plus employees and this is what you should behave like. And we, like. And we you know you read these specific right. research reports. Right. And we are going to package our product as somebody for somebody who not only this is what you want, but this is this is who you look for to set the standard of what you buy. Like that's a game changer. And that's where I think Claude really comes in and is differentiated versus these other AI tools that we've used so far today. So I can get into some performance marketing. Ooh. Let's do that. Um, I, I want to do a little performance marketing. And actually, Bard outperformed ChatGPT. So, so I give it a page from Zapier. Again, I told it, take a 10 second breath. You've got this. I feel good for you, AI. Me and you are partners in this. And it browsed the page and it gave me like generic tips, right? Like all of these tips it gave me were pretty generic. So I actually went to, I actually had this thing where it just stopped giving me tips halfway through. And I'm like, should I keep waiting? Awkward. <laughs> and, then, and then it came back and said, I apologize. But I went to Bard. Man, Bard was really good. It actually analyzed the page. And like, it actually pulled out things. I'm like, jeez, I would actually change all of this. So <laughs> You're I'm, like, I would actually, I'm pretty good at SEO and I would change yeah. this. The title tag on the page was like, how Zapier works. It was saying like, how Zapier connects your apps and automates your workflows. I was like, that's pretty good. Like, it told me to optimize my headings and subheadings on the page. Right, this, the subheadings we had was like, what is Zapier? How does apps work and benefits of using Zapier? What I loved about what it got right here is it talked about, hey, you should change like the benefits of using, using Zapier for your business. They start to make it much more specific so that person knows that this is for them. So again, this is another example of it actually being able to like pull out things from a page and actually show you exactly like why you should make those changes. If you were a business that didn't even have an SEO consultant working for you, I would say that this is probably better than 80% of the SEO <laughs> agencies yes. you'll get. This is better than most lowest SEO consultants for sure. Okay, I wanted to show you one more thing. And this is what I've talked about before. Now, the way I think about OpenAI in this context is it's like a playground for me. So I'm like trying to get the content <laughs> correct and then I will integrate it into like Zapier and other tools to automate it, right? So you should try to perfect it here in terms of the prompt, and then you can start to automate it through Zapier and other tools. So what I'm, what the prompt here is, is, is basically think about a, think about this as a, an email. So someone comes in and we grab their role and we grab their tech stack automatically. And I'm trying to personalize that email, email for them. So I'm saying, Hey, like you're a marketing professional, you're in a SaaS business. This is the technology you use. Return the top three workflows we can automate for you with, with a brief description of why and no other information. So this is me just trying to figure out, can yeah. I pull from your tech stack and your role automations that are actually applicable to you? 
it does a really good job, right? It pulls out lead management and nurturing, talks about how you can integrate Typeform and HubSpot through Zapier. Pulls out social media monitoring and engagement, Love talks this. about how you can use Zapier and Hootsuite and, and uh, Asana to track all things there. Conversion rate optimization talks about how you can use Hotjar and Unbounce via Zapier to automate a bunch of stuff there. Kier, we're doing this right now with the API, the OpenAI API to generate right. emails you, very similar exactly. to this, obviously, for HubSpot. And uh, we're about to launch, and it's like the early early preview of all this stuff. It's good. Okay, so I've got the email correct. Like, it's it's pretty good. It's too long. And what I actually asked it to do was like create a personalized email to the Mary Jane, give it some information about who Mary Jane is, talked about the fact that those three workflows are fine, but you need to make them fun, punchy. I asked it to talk to Mary like it was their best friend. Like, just talk. This is you <laughs> yeah. having a conversation with Mary. It's too formal. And then... Basically, we need to get Mary on a meeting, right? And so it does a version of it. For some reason, the first version, it, it went like it went into kind of Lord of the Rings mode and said, like, <laughs> I, I do, Kieran, I do have this, I do have this conspiracy theory that like all these AI models are kind of fantasy dorks. Yeah, like, I think that's what's you, happened, you right? do get some like Lord of the Rings and fantasy type stuff sometimes just throw in thrown in randomly. Yeah, like, hey, spread some pixie dust. I'm like, hey, I was like, no. So again, I say, shorten it, write the email as if it's your best friend. And I said, the feeling they should get is that they've just discovered something amazing. Does a great job, right? This next one is really good. Actually, really personal. Feels like your best friend. Feels like copy written for you. Not what most marketers write. Most marketers and salespeople, people, your emails suck, right? They are not personal. So they are still generic. It's 2023. Up, up level your game. But I wanted to get to the Last part. So first email, wow, like it's, look at how it's actually shortened all of the yeah, workflows. It's, a nice email. it's punchy. Then I say, well, create a, no, I'm just a small business, right? I, I don't have a lot of resources. I say, create a, a drip email campaign, spread it out across two weeks, have delays between each emails and write all three emails. It does a really good job. Look, the second email, your shortcut to marketing paradise. It basically says circling oh, like back, this. about Zapier, shall we chat? And the, what, you see what it does each time? The third email, the last one, look how abbreviated it is. It understands yeah. to shorten each email because it that person has engaged. It understands the user behavior. Yeah. Which is the subtlety here, which is pretty amazing. Look, little icon. So I thought that was super cool. And then the last thing I'll show you, right? So basically you're using it with the API. We're doing the same thing, integrating this into all of our workflows and lifecycle flows. It's really, really good. The last thing I'll just show you is this is an example of how you can start to integrate it into your product. You've heard me talk about the AI concierge yeah. before. Shout out to the growth team in Zapier working on lots of incredible things. This is an example of like an AI first experience of how you use a software product. Oh, that's cool. So you can see it taking information from someone who just wants to like, I don't know what to build. I'll just build this workflow. And it actually is able to start to build the workflow for you, right? Whatever you tell it, I want to, I want to take leads from here, put them here enrich them with this, and then actually send them here. And it can understand natural language and it can just conversate with you and create all of those things on the fly. So when you first come into the product, instead of the usual click, 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 trying to figure out like, how do I actually use this tool? You can just do all of that through natural language, right? And the, and it's actually yeah. building, it's, like, it's not it's just like showing you where to go to get these workflows. It's building the workflows in real time for the you. The fact what that it, it's building it for you is the magic trick right. that's and happening and it, here. Then it just like connects you to it. So that's an example for performance marketing. It actually is pretty good on the search tips, like some actual good yeah. things there you can integrate. It can really personalize those emails. And then I think at really some good. point we integrate the concierge and people actually start to interact with your product in the same way that they interact with just like a person on, on chat. And I think that's a huge needle mover. Dude. I'm sorry, but this show was fire today. It was fire. Like, come we, on. Like, you don't really get <laughs> two marketing dorks just going deep, like, on AI the way we just did. I I don't know. Like, I leave today's show being more optimistic than ever, actually. Like, I felt like if we did this show three to six months ago, it would have been us just making fun of AI. And now we're like, oh, wow. Like, we would actually do most of these things. And, like, we're pretty good at this. Imagine like a novice, like you can go from novice to pretty good very quickly. Oh, this and is, that the... is what is so powerful. Right. If you're listening or watching the show today, like there's no excuse. You can go today 
do what we've outlined for you and your marketing will instantly be better, not like in months, in like a week. Right. There, well, the excuse, you, you can sit on the sidelines, get run over. There's been many platform and technolog technological shifts where people sit in the sideline, sidelines and get run over. My core takeaway is this just reinforces what we talked about at Inbound, where we talked about the three categories and the copy and paste marketer can become, or the lazy marketer or the marketer who's like a novice can become pretty good, pretty fast. Yeah, so it bolts at the middle. The second thing, my takeaway is, dude, I know that you feel this way as well. Fuck, I just love when I can just do marketing. <laughs> It's so fun. And I don't have to do all of the other things. I could just oh, like do gosh. marketing. Like I can just play with things, do marketing, have ideas, see them come to life. Have you, you, like, you like it when the M and CMO stands for marketing and not management. Yes, I think it, it is. I, I enjoy the times when I can just, I, I my happy place is marketing. I spent three hours last night doing this and I was like, I'm in my happy place. <laughs> you were so happy. You were what's happening to being like, oh, the show's going to go long. I've got great examples. Got so many examples. They're so funny. <laughs> We're going to close out because we've longest show we've done in a long time. But if this was a good show, we can we can do more. We, this is just we are just scraping the surface. If we should make this a series or if we should do a few follow ups, hit us up in the YouTube comments, please. We would love to hear your take on that. We will be back with you very soon on Marking Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.